Hello all, welcome to Public Cloud Design Tips and Tricks for a new topic. Today's topic is Azure App Service Plan. The problem statement here is how to select an effective plan when designing an app service based application architecture. Before we go to app service plan, let's little bit discuss about what is an app service. So Azure App Service is a pass container or platform that can host different applications like web applications, API apps, and mobile apps with various application runtimes, okay? Now an Azure function can also be deployed as an app service and an applications or an app service always run on a compute resource or a compute power, which is managed by Microsoft in this case. So that is all about uh, Azure app service. Now what is an Azure app service plan? Is a set of compute resources meant to run the applications we have discussed okay it always run within a region and the set of compute resources always attest to that app service plan so that is how you can define an azure app service plan now how it looks like if you see the diagram there is a compute power or a compute resource the blue color and within that there are different applications are deployed like there are three app service web app applications and few slots are deployed in that compute resource so within a single unit so that is how it looks like now let's discuss a little about app service plan attributes so azure app service plan once created in a region defines the compute resources with either windows or linux environment the number of vm instances attached to it what is the size of the VM? It can be small, medium or large. And what kind of a pricing tier it tests to it. Okay, so that is how it looks like. Now, what is a pricing tier? Pricing tier provides specific features of that compute resource or the compute power and the cost it tests to that. Okay, now in a nutshell, it can be free, shared, basic, standard, premium, premium V2 and V3 or isolated and isolated V2. Now, the most important part is app service plan categorization. Okay, so predominantly there are three categories available shared compute, dedicated compute, and isolated compute. What is a shared compute? Uh, so, the shared compute is nothing but a single compute uh, unit where there are and that can be shared across consumers. Okay, so in this example, if you see there is a single uh, compute unit and that compute unit is being shared with consumer C1 and consumer C2 with their applications. Okay, so they have app service web app uh, deployed in those uh, that compute resource. Okay, so it, it is shared across. Now the limitation of shared compute is it cannot be scaled out. Okay, now coming to the dedicated compute, dedicated compute, the apps in the same app service plan share the same compute resources with a dedicated VM. Okay, so what it means, now you can, from the shared compute, uh, when you are coming to the dedicated compute, you can now map one consumer to one dedicated app service plan. Okay, so now it's a one-to-one -one mapping. Now within that app service plan, the consumer have a choice to deploy a single app or multiple app. Okay, so now it is more isolated on the compute power within that consumer itself okay so similarly there is a consumer c2 the, it has also another app service plan where it can deploy its web applications okay so that is how you can define a dedicated compute uh, category now what is an isolated category isolated category is more a special category where it provides network isolations also on top of compute isolation so in dedicated, you have a compute isolation. In isolated, even it's more than compute isolation to a network isolation. Sometimes it is required for special use cases or for security requirements as well. Now the advantage of dedicated and isolated computes are it can scale down. Okay, isolated even scaled out more than dedicated compute. So this is all about F service plan categorization. Now when you comes to a real life example, within an organization, there are various environments span across, okay? For example, dev environment, test environment, prod environment, or some other kind of environment as well, 
required for performance testings or some security testings. So that is how it you can define your development life cycle with respect to an environment within an organization. Now, based on that, it you can also divide it into different category like depth, depth test F service plan category, production F service plan category, or special F service plan category like that. Okay, so now let's discuss about depth test S plan category. Why it is required? It is meant for very basic workloads for dev and test environment only. Okay, now within that there are three category possibility: free, shared, and B1. So what is free? It it is it is always good for quick testing or demo kind of applications because the limitation here is it has always one GB memory and one hour of compute time actually. So that is how we can define F1. Coming to shared, shared has added capability on top of a free tier by having a custom domain capability provisioning and it has more compute time compared to F1. Okay. Now, B1 is the best category within depth test F service plan. It has a dedicated A series compute and it has more memory and storage capability compared to D1 and F. Now, it can also scale but on a manual way. It also comes with different flavor like B2 and B3 with more compute resources. Now, coming to production F service plan, it is meant for higher environment workloads like prod, performance engineering or a production like environment, you can say. Okay, now again, the category has two kind of flavor like standard and uh, premium. What is standard? Standard comes with A series compute power. It is good for auto scaling, slot feature, backup feature and traffic management feature. Okay, traffic management deals with traffic manager service for, for load balancing basically. It also supports blue green deployment and it can expand to S2 and S3 category also with more compute resources. Now, premium is the best class within uh, production app service plan. It comes with DV2 series compute. It provides, it provides better performance. It can also scale up to 20 instances. It supports staging slots and it comes with P1, V2, P2, V2, P3, V2 kind of uh, flavor basically within premium category. Okay. Uh, we already discussed long back. There is a capability within app service called regional VNet integration that you can also attest with this kind of a plan, premium plan, okay. Now, within this, if you try to categorize VM size, okay, then there are three kind of uh, possibilities are there, like small, medium, large, small comes with two CPU core and eight GB memory, medium comes with four CPU cores and 16 GB memory, and large comes with eight, eight CPU and 32 gigabyte of memory. Now, coming to the special plan, F service plan is isolated F service plan. And this one is meant for special use cases where consumers need more capacity and features than the production category. Okay. Now, isolated comes with I1, I2, and I3. So it has storage capacity that can extend up to terabyte level. Okay. It has also support with special network isolation capability we already discussed. It can also scale even more than 20 instances. Now, the compute series is more or less similar to the premium tier. So, that is how the F service plans and categories looks like. You can always map your design requirement and other NFR requirement to the F service plan. And then you can do your own capacity planning. If you want to deep dive more into it, there are a lot of... Uh, um, links available within Microsoft both for plans and the pricing cost attached to those plans. You can very well go through it and do a good understanding of this before you do a capacity planning based on your uh, design requirement. Okay, and that's it for the day. Thank you and have a good day.